everybody so welcome to my channel um i am doing a second video i hope to do one sooner than this so i i know that this is a new channel and probably it'll be a while before people actually start catching up and watching it anyway but i wanted to do a little video on kind of my work area and the things that i have as i'm a new stamper slash crafter um so i i kind of wanted to show people sort of some of the things that i had some things that i use i'm going to talk about a little bit about where i got them and you know for somebody maybe starting out and doesn't really know you know what do i need to get where should i start that kind of thing i thought this one would be a nice video for that so with that being said we'll go ahead and get started so first of all, when I first started, I only really used this mat. As you can tell, it's well loved. A lot of this paint, I mean, it's, it's not dirty. This is actually stained. But this is a Fiskars, one of those self-healing mats that you can actually buy like at Walmart um, for sewers. Sewers actually use this. I used it before I got my glass mat and I work on it. I still work on it. I'll just usually just tuck my glass mat to the side sometimes. But um, anytime I'm doing painting, I always use this. But this was, this was one of the first things. You need some sort of work surface other than your table. Uh, speaking of tables, I do not have a fancy craft desk. As you can see, this is a buffet table, like one of those guys. I got this at Costco. I want to say it's about six foot long, as you can see. And I have two of them side by side. See that down there? Um, and I just have all of my stuff up there. Um, if you wrap around, I'm going to go real slow so I don't give you guys whiplash. Um, again, my craft area is messy. I debated on actually cleaning up, making it all nice and neat. I'm like, you know, no, I'm going to show it kind of how it is normally because this is really kind of my workspace and I'm kind of a tornado kind of person. So I have a little uh, shelf here that I keep stuff that I need to grab quickly or easily. It's right next to me. Um, so I have my envelopes here. I've got like little craft papers here, just small ones that I can grab that I want if I'm doing something small. I've got a little bit larger craft papers back there. I don't, some people organize them. I just, if I know I need a piece of paper, you know, if I'm looking for something specific, I kind of know what's in there. I just kind of thumb through. Um, I'll show you just kind of thing. I just have, you know, this some, some lawn fawn paper in there, just different scraps. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. These are post-it size papers. They're not post-it. They're all scraps. But, you know, sometimes you just need something small uh, tucked behind. Maybe if you're doing a shadow box card or something of that nature, I have those. Here I have, like, my 6x6 six six size papers um, uh, or smaller. This one here, I just bought this at... Um, uh, Michael's, I believe it was, and or no Hobby Lobby. It went, it was fifty percent off, and it's called Stargazer. It's got some beautiful. I don't know if you can really tell, but foiled background papers. It's really really nice. So I know I'm going to be doing some really nice things with this. Here's another one of my. This is my Crafter's Companion. I do. I really my. Um, I do a lot of fantasy based stuff, fairies, um, that kind of thing, and I really love that color base. So I have that. So I have a lot of. But you can tell I have a lot of. I have glitter paper, all sorts of stuff in there. But that's that. Um, I have over here. I've got some larger glitter paper. And then I have my white cardstock that I grab quickly and easily. Top is going to be, as you can see, I have it separated here. So this down at the bottom, this is really heavy. This is like 120 pound, I think. And this is a little lighter than that. I think it's like 80 pound or 100 pound or whatever. So I have that um, so I can, because I grabbed that the most. So it's right here by my hand. I have some decorative, um, eight, I have some vellum paper, different specialty papers. That's eight and a half by 11. I can pull that out if I need to. A lot of people have these guys organized. This is just how I have mine. Easy, quick, you know. And again, I don't have a huge stash. So once it gets large enough, I know I'll have to redo this. But again, when you're starting out, this is kind of what I do. These are um, already pre-cut. Pick these up at Hobby Lobby on a clearance. But they're already pre-cut. The A5 card size. And I have them by color. So if I want to grab one of those, sometimes I'll do that too. Down below, I just have some craft supplies that I don't really use that much. But I kind of just wanted to have them around. Some, you know like little bags and extra paint brushes and stuff like that I don't really use that stuff so I'm not going to focus on that right now uh, but I just kind of wanted to see then over here um this is I picked up I don't know if I can zoom this out any I'm pretty close to it so I picked up this storage rack at a yard sale actually for like 25 bucks and it's the coolest thing ever because it's got these shelves on it that slide out as you can see that moves it's got these shelves here and it's got a drawer there and a bottom. So I have my, and it goes up from the bottom. So I have my laminator here. 
I have my scan and cut here. I just threw one of my Exxon. I'm going to tell you something. If you don't have a Xyron uh, sticker maker, you really need to take a look into that. I have one here. I have a really big one up there. And I have several small ones. And I'll show you those in a minute. Now, these guys are all refillable. The small ones are just use them and toss them. But these guys, I buy all my Xyron stuff on HSN. They always have. And I wait till they have the craft sales. Really great deals. I bought one of these. I really love watercoloring and I use the watercolor pencils. And so I bought, I, I went to Costco. I bought this sucker. It's really nice because it's made where it, this particular brand, um, and it is called paint. Uh, I point, I point halo, um, by Westcott. I got it on sale at Costco for like $15, but it's really great is that it doesn't allow buildup from colored pencils to get there. So it continues to sharpen. And when you stick it in, it will stop sharpening once it's at the, the you know exact point where it should be. So it's really great. Works wonderful. And you just pop it off the top. And I have my little heating element. I have this here. This was really nice because this thing actually has a plug already into it. Um, but then I have this plugged into the wall. And so I have these guys that I can plug right into it when I need to use them. Then up on the next shelf, as you can see, I've been using these. So they're pulled out. Um, but I have colored papers separated by the colors here. And then at the very tippy top, that's where I have my other Xyron machine. Now, these, I actually, I have, this is gone because I have, I'm using it on the shelf behind me. But this was just one of those, you know, where you pull out. So I have um, these guys here. I don't use them very often, but Studio 71, they were the first markers that I picked up. Um, they work okay. They're not as good as Copic, so, but I have them here. These guys are my fun water, um, these are Tombos. These are really fun. I have a bunch of those in there and some extra Copics that I keep because I keep my markers flat. Some people say, oh, it doesn't matter. I feel like it does. They run. I don't really like it. Now, uh, we'll, we'll move back around. So, I have some Spectrum Noir. Uh, markers they work really good so I have them these are these this is the stuff that I keep close here this is a really neat organizer I bought it at Michael's on a 50% coupon um, I did it on an online purchase free pickup short store pickup I paid like $15 for this thing it was normally 30 bucks it's, it's like a you know remember the lazy Susans it's really cool I have a lot of stuff in here so I've got my nice scissors that I use right here easily grabbable um, I've got some my little fancy scissors that do the cool little edges and stuff. I've got my little spatulas, um, hole punchers. These are my Tim Holtz Distress um, crayons that I can use there. Um, this is a, um, you know what, it, and here's something that's interesting too. So I don't keep this with my markers because for very, or markers, listen to me. I don't keep these with my other like brushes because this one, as you can see, it's, it's all like sticky and stuff. This is where I've used to smooth mush like glitter glue and stuff so I keep that separate and I use it for that all the time these are some embossing folders just easily grabbable stuff that I have you know super easy and you can use all you can, you can use it for all kinds of stuff but this is what I use mine for I picked this up at a yard sale this is a neat little thing it's an old-timey Tupperware container thing like a the organizer and you know a lot of people spend so much money on these organizing uh, things or they'll go to Ikea and etc etc you don't have to do that just you know sometimes it just it doesn't take a whole lot and you can just kind of make do with what you have and that's what I do because I don't have a whole lot of money to be investing in these expensive you know organizing stuff so I grab them when I can get them so I have a bunch of different little erasers here and some, um, this is the, uh, sickles by, uh, Ranger. I have a little hole punch, um, uh, which does the corners. I don't have the little container yet. So you can see like I've totally done it in a way that is ridiculous, but it works. Um, this just to keep it from clogging up inside there. I have the multimedia mat and the glossy accents and I just stuck those little needle things in there until I can get the right bio. Um, these guys are, and I use those all the time. So I have them close. These are those Zyron that I was telling you about these sticker makers these things are amazing I've only ever seen them on HSN but let's say you have a teeny little tiny um, die cut that you've cut that you're going to be using on a card you can literally just feed it right through the back it pops out here and it's on a sticker so you just peel it off and stick it um, it's surfaced you know from one side to the other completely covered in like a glue it's just it's really great but once you use it up you toss it it's gone um, but they're recyclable so you can recycle those really nice here's my watercolor paper again like I told you I'd like to do uh, color penciling coloring and watercoloring so I have that separate 
here is my um, I have a couple of different watercolor pencils but these are this is one older set that I have um, I don't even know that if you can buy these anymore but the brand is called General Kimberly but these guys here are my Spectrum Noir ones and I really like those those are uh, I'm sorry not Spectrum it's uh, Prismacolor super super nice watercolor and pencils man they work great you can actually color with those without making them wet too and they're smooth and really nice if you want to blend, this stuff works really great. It's Gamsol. Um, I use that. You can put it just a tiny little bit. It's super flammable. It's super dangerous. You need to be really careful. Have it well vented. If you use a little bit of that stuff, um, you can use it on one of these guys here. Like this. And blend your coloring. It's really great for color pencils. So that, I have all a lot of my different uh, inks here. As you can see, I have some. These are my Stampin' Up! ink pads. I don't have to. I only have a couple of those, so I have them up here. I'm actually a part of a subscription box I just started, so I'm keeping these guys up here so I can just add to them as I get them, because I'll get more each month. But here's just some Hero Arts. Um, different inks do different things. For people that may be getting started that don't know, it's important that you have a good range of ink. Um, depending on what you want to do, I do a lot of embossing and coloring, so I have a couple of different Versamark pads. This is the in my opinion, the best watermark uh, stamp pad that you can use for embossing. It, you know, there's a lot of different kinds out there. I love Versamark. I also love Versamark's black ink for doing my uh, doing most of my stamping. It's fantastic. The only difference is, so if I'm going to watercolor, I'm going to use this. If I'm going to Copic color or marker color, I'm going to use this. This is the best black ink that you can use for Copic coloring. Um, and as you can see, I've got my Copic markers in a little container over there. These guys I have just recently discovered, and I really like the ink. I haven't really tested it with water coloring. It says that it's a water reactive dye. Um, so it does just like Tim Holtz does, Distress. So you don't want to stamp and try to watercolor. It's, these are going to blend up. But these are really great for doing um, And I've, what I have done a couple of times. Let me show you. Where is my... I've done some backgrounds with it with stencils. Here's an example of something I did with that ink. It is amazing. See how it blends and stuff? Super great. Really blendable, nice ink. This is all, all of this, as you can see, this is Spectrum Noir, which is owned by Crafters Companion. This is all the, her products. Um, so these are her, her die cuts, the fairy die cuts, the butterfly die cuts. This is a stencil that I did when I did that with the VersaFine Black Onyx ink. And this is all the coloring. Now that moon actually is a, um, I made it, I just made a uh, stencil a background to be able to make that because uh, I didn't have one and I wasn't, I didn't really, don't have a circle die yet. So it worked really great. I just cut a nice round piece of paper and then I, um, laminated it and cut the laminate out and then I just set it there and did around it, which has really worked great. Again, it doesn't cost me any money to do that. I mean, other than a little bit of laminating. So, um, the laminating papers and you can get those at Walmart for like 10 bucks for a pack of like a hundred. So super inexpensive, nice way to do it. Just have to be creative. But these guys are going to be, um, I'm going to be adding, I'm going to buy all of these. I really like the ink. I really, it's another alternative to doing some distress blending. It blends really nice. Speaking of blending, now, I want to show you guys something. So, I've tried a few different things, okay? So, I really like Tim Holtz Distress Oxide inks, okay? So, I have a bunch of these. I have the small ones and the big ones. These work really great. They, you know, react to the water like, just like the Spectrum Noir as I just showed you. You can get the, these little blending tools, which are really great. They do work. They work really good. You have to have a different one for each color. Obviously, as you can see, I have a little container of all these ones. I bought these guys, too. These are really good for doing, like, corner blending and stuff like that or small area blending. Spectrum Noir comes with, they have one of these guys, too, and it, it's but it's square, and I'm not really a fan of it, to be honest with you. I've tried to blend with it. It just, it's weird. I, I mean, I'm sure some people are successful with it, but for me, it just, it doesn't, it's not comfortable. It doesn't feel as good as the Tim Holtz ones that are round and easy to get to. Now, with that being said, I have recently discovered a different way of blending inks, and I will be using these more often. Now, there's a lot of people, a lot of these blogs that talk about these, these brushes that you can get. They're super expensive, like $50, $60 for a set. You do not have to get those super expensive ones, okay? I bought this set right here. It's the same kind of brush at Walmart for $9. I believe it came with four or five different brushes. Let me see here. 
I know there's another one, but there's three that I found. So as you can see, they're different sizes. They're super blend bendy. Okay. Uh, you can get them in the makeup set. They're over with the foundation and stuff. They're super soft, but what's really nice, they blend like butter. Okay. This purple is not ink. This is the color that the brushes were. You can kind of see on this one where there was a little ink on it, but I, because I use it, but I've used the pink, the purple, the blue, all of it, but these are the colors of the brushes. Now, what's really nice about these is when you blend, okay, so you're doing your blending. Once you're done, you just get a spare piece of paper and you blend, 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 blend until the, until no more colors coming off. Then you change colors. There is no having to clean it. There is no having to swap these little guys out to get a different color. It is just move, roll on, just wrap it off, choop, 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 and then go back. I mean, they blend so nicely. So I'm going to be buying a few more of these and I'm going to be using these primarily just because the convenience of not having to swap out all those foam pads all the time or buy new foam pads. And for $9 for a set, I mean, even when, if I have these things last for a year, I'll buy another set. It's not a big deal. So that's another alternative for you. But again, and I don't remember the name of these guys. I think it was like, oh, here it is. It's called Moda. There it is right there. Super, like I said, I think it's four or five brushes. And you get it for nine bucks at Walmart. You can do it online too. But so this ink is really great for that, for blending. Actually, you can pretty much blend any ink that you want to, but these blend really well and these blend really well. Those are my favorites so far. So there's that. Now I have another little, little round Lazy Susan. I got it at Michael's on a coupon. As you can see, I do a lot of my, buy a lot of my storage stuff at Michael's when they do the coupon. So I have some different things here. I uh, kind of just go through. So these are the little blending stubs. I bought these on Amazon. Um, you basically use them to blend for your coloring pencils. Really nice. I have a little Sizzix. Uh, this is, you know, what's called like a uh, fussy scissors. I use them a lot. They're really nice. Um, I've had them for eons. I can't even remember how much I paid for them. I have a little mini mister here that you can use to do your pss 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 on your distress ink, which is really nice. I have a lot of different little tools in this. This is kind of like my generic tool section here. I have some tweezers. This little guy here is kind of interesting. So I got this from Christmas. My husband bought me for this for Christmas. So it's got the pointy end here. So when if you're picking up stuff to put onto stuff, it, you have that little that little thing. This is called a tool, uh, spill binders tool in one. So you have that there. Really nice little point. And this, it works really nice. So it comes with this little pat, this little thing here. So what it's meant for is if you have a die that has a lot of things that you have to poke out. That's what this is for, by the way. You poke out the little pieces of a die cut, the intricate dies. This, you can just roll right over the die cut and it will push all those pieces out, make it easy. Oh, look at that. You can see my kitty hair was on there. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, it just, it's a, it's an, it just makes it a little easier if you have a really intricate, like a, you know, a flower die that has a ton of pieces, et cetera, et cetera. Um... I have uh, some blending tools, blending markers. These are clear and blending markers. I've got a little jewel picker. You know, just these are the type of things that you you you, know, you want to build up to. Okay, this took me a long time to get this stuff, so you don't want to you don't necessarily have to start with all of this. But some of these things are important depending on what you want to do. I mostly stamp, scrapbook, and journal. So those are kind of things that I do for me. I make cards sometimes, but I do I do a lot of artwork. So as you can see, here's some of the stuff that I've done. I do the artwork and then I throw it up on my wall. And then you can see my butterflies and stuff. So that's the kind of stuff I do. I just like to, to tool around in there. Um, it's important, I think, you need to have a jelly roll pin. A couple of them, as you can see, I have a bunch. They they will write white on top of so you can use to make little details and stuff. Uh, Wink of Stella pins, those are really great. They put, you can do different colors. I have clear, gold, and silver. They put uh, sparkles on everything. That's how I did a lot of the sparkle work on some of these pictures. Um, they're really nice. It's important. I think everybody should have some Wink of Stella in their thing. So I've got here, I've got some red. Regular um, coloring pencils, just normal regular coloring pencils. Those are Prisma colors. And then I bought these new ones. I got these on sale, Stadlers from, and I haven't really used them yet. I'm excited to use them uh, and tie that gamisole with them. But I got them on, on a coupon as well. I have all of my watercoloring stuff here, so I have all my my markers or uh, my um, I keep my watercolor pencils over here. But I do have some watercolor markers right here. These are all watercolor markers. And then I have my paintbrushes and stuff here, so I keep them all set. And I have, I also use, I have these guys, which are the watercoloring markers that have water inside of them. So then you can squirt out the water and kind of go with that way. So just depending on what you're looking for. So I have that. So that's easily, all this is super easily grabbed. This is where I keep my favorite stamps. I have Lawn Fawn and Kindred in here and my Enchanted Forest set. So there's stencils and die cuts and stamps all in there because it's all one set. 
Um, I have my little Harry Potter. I am not, um, I am a Gryffindor. Just want to make sure I clear that, but I caught that sucker on Think Geek for sale. So I grabbed it and it's nice. It's nice and nice. So I'm not, I am not that house. I'm Gryffindor. Just want to clarify that. Um, so I got some deco foil stuff, distress glaze, glues, you know, tacky stuff, stuff that's, you know, stamp cleaner, just stuff that easily grab that kind of thing. And then if you pan over here, I've got some 12 by 12 papers here, which is really nice. So I can grab them easily. And then I have my, um, Sissix, um, Big Shot, which is what I use a lot there. I have, let me see my water here. So I have my foiling set or my, yeah, my foils here. So I use that with my, um, uh, heating, uh, Laminator, couldn't think about it. My gosh, I'm tired. I have all my watercolorings here. I've got several different sets that I use along with my pencils. My brusho paints are my favorite. I'm telling you, if you have never used brusho, you need to invest in a set of brusho paints. Their powder takes so little to do, but the effects that you can do, see all that background with that firework or background? Those are all brusho paints. It's amazing. I love that stuff. It's my favorite. I have this really cool uh, shelving system here from Costco, and I use, I have my, as you can see, I have my stamp sets here, glues, um, you see this is kind of a miscellaneous drawer, but I have my glues and tapes and stuff like that here. I have uh, little dolly stamps. These are my uh, Peachy King stamps. I keep these right here. I love Peachy King. It's one, another one of my favorites. I just have everything that I grab quickly, like my journals here, and I have my cutters here. There's my distress inks there. This is some stuff that I just bought. Maybe I'll pull that out and we'll look at that together in a minute. I have my embossing powders all right here. These are my embossing powders. These are all my Pearl X and Jackart. I love Pearl X. I do a lot with it too. Then I have my Misty and my Tim Holtz stamper. Now, when you're getting started, you don't need both of those. I bought the Tim Holtz first. I wasn't a big fan of it. I mean, I will use it, but it's it's made where you can do rubber or clear, and I, I just do clear normally. If I have rubber, it's on a, it's a wooden block. I just use the wooden block, so it's not a big deal. On I use it on one of these guys. I stamp on that. You want to have some sort of background if you're not stamping on a, on a stamping um, applicator like that because this will help this the ink kind of set into the paper better but I like my misty better personally so um, that's the one that I use mostly but I do have both and I do alternate from time to time now stamps you know depending on what you're looking for I would to what I would recommend is whatever you like is what you should start with. So if you like flowers, then start with floral. If you like fantasy, then start with fantasy. If you like gnomes and fairies and stuff like that, like me, then that's where you should start. And then just kind of build up, you know, I do, I catch mine on sale and I buy them when I catch them on sale. Um, I, you know, I, tr one thing that I would like to say is, you know, I buy some, you know, from every, I buy from all over the place. I buy wherever I can catch sales. Um, I mean, I really do. And I try to support my, you know, these stamping companies the most that I can. So I, I do like, I buy on Simon's to stamp quite a bit. So I buy a lot of these things and this is how I organize them. Uh, like I had showed on my other video, you can take a look. I'm not going to go into a lot of details. I showed how to do these, but so I have, you know, I have a lot of different varieties, but you really just want to kind of start where, with what you like. Now, let me give you an example of buying where, you know, you can get deals. Now, so I was on my, I believe it was my Stamp Junkies website. This company had posted that they were going out of business. And it's unfortunate because I just discovered them. But um, I think there's some of their stuff is staying open, but they're, they were liquidating a lot of it. It's called Some More Fun. And she said, hey, you know, we got a lot of stuff on sale. You should come in. So I checked her website out, and she did. She had a lot of stuff on clearance. So these are some of the things that I purchased. And I mean, I picked these up really cheap. I think I only paid like three bucks for this. And this was originally $14.99. And it's a, it's a tag. It's a tag die, which is really neat. And it has with love. And so, I mean, you can use it with the words. But even with love is going to be great. I'll be using that on cards all the time. That's, you know, um, the die cut. But then you also have the tag with that. So if I'm getting presents away, it's pretty neat. A couple of bucks. These were a really great deal. So I paid $5 for a whole set of mementos. How cool is that? And I mean, if you're doing layering stamping with flowers and stuff, these are really great. You want the small ones so you can kind of just dab, 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 dab around. So I got I bought two sets of those. Actually, I got that one. And I don't know. I think these guys are 10 or maybe $15 normally. I'm not sure. 
but this at five dollars for a whole set of these was a really good deal and so this one comes with like um you know black red green and brown and then i got purple you know three four different shades of purples which is really nice so i'll be able to use both of those well, let's see what else is in this bag of goodies here so these are wink pens kind of like the wink Stella. so they do the sparkly kind of cool stuff so we've got gold and this one's kind of like a um rainbow effect and then we have a purple purple as you can see is the theme as that is my favorite and i do a lot of stuff with purple now i haven't done anything with these guys i'm excited to kind of try it out i bought small bottles of it it's called unicorn spit if you go and check out youtube there's some videos of this company that makes this stuff and you can put it on so many different things but from what I understand, it's it's kind of, it's, she, well, the way she described it, how she put it, she said that it was like watercolor married acrylic color who had a baby with um, a different kind of color. I, I'm not really sure, but it is so pretty and sparkly that I knew that I was going to be able to make some beautiful stuff with this stuff. So I got some of that. I paid like $1.50 for this glossy accents, and I know that thing's like $5 for me, so I'm really excited about that. I got a really good deal on that. Let's see what else. So, oh, got some pearling pens. I really love doing stuff with sparkly pearly stuff. And this is a glitter halo pearl pen. So I'm sure I'm going to have fun with that. Lots, lots of cool effects I'll be able to do with that. And there's another one, a darker purple. Let's see what else we have in here. Oh, and then I have this uniball. This one is a another white pen. So this is important to have these guys. You'll use a, you're going to use white pens a lot. Um, this is a pigment ink pen, uh, so that way, as you can see, it's white. So you can do your little details on, you know, on your stamps and stuff. It was nice. She gave us a, she gave me a free stamp in there and said, thinking of you, which is nice. It's a little rubber stamp. So I'm going to put some of that tacket over and over on the back, let it dry, and then I can use it over and over on my stamp, on my Misty. So that's really nice. I probably have a thinking of you, but that's all right. And so there's a little things. So this is what I was stuck on. See? All right, so yep, that looks like that's everything in my little bag. So again, I think I paid $40 or maybe $42 for all of this. When you catch that stuff on sale and these clearance items like this, you can stock up for really little. I mean, that's ridiculous. If I had gone into a regular store and bought all this stuff, it probably would have cost me about $60 or $70. So, I mean, especially this die cut. The die cut alone, as you can see, she had it marked at 15 bucks. So it's, it's, you know, definitely worth it to keep your eyes peeled for things like that. Today, I got an email. I signed, you make sure you want to sign up for these stamping companies, newsletters and stuff, because they will send you these random things. Today, I got an email from Brutus Monroe and they said that they were, they were liquidating the, you know, year end stuff and they had all, they were doing these mystery boxes and they were going to be over two pounds and it was going to cost, I think $45. But you get it. You have no idea what's going to be in it, but that it is going to be loaded in over two pounds full of stamps and dyes and embossing powders and inks and whatever else that they might have from Brutus and Monroe's line, stencils, whatever. So I bought it. So in, with taxes and everything, I think it cost me sixty dollars. But they said that you know the value of that box was a hundred and fifty dollars. So I am excited. So less than half. I mean, half would be seventy five. I only paid sixty with shipping, and it's going to be two pounds. So I'm going to do a video when I get that, and we'll do an unboxing. I'm also going to be doing another unboxing video for a company that I subscribe to every month um, called Put a Stamp on It. I didn't do one for my I got one last month. It was my very first one. That's where I got those two um, stamping up die, uh, stamps, but I will do one. I'm going to be getting it probably sometime next week. So when I get it, watch for that. I'm going to do an unboxing of all the goodies. I would highly recommend that you find a good stamp. Um, if you want to do stamps and you want to do crafting, put a stamp on it. It gives you all sorts of stuff, inks and die cuts and stamps and pa papers. And so it's a really good way to build your stash. So I would look into that, but I went to Crate Joy and found put a stamp on it. And I highly recommend them. I was super excited and really loved everything that I got in the first one. And as you can see, I have a, a quite a bit of stuff. So it's not like I have nothing and, you know, I'm going to be excited about anything I got. Everything I got was useful. Everything I got is going to be something that I will be able to use and, and put in my stash for, for useful purposes. So, um, yeah, so this is just my video. I appreciate you hanging with me. I know that it was almost 30 minutes. So we went through a lot of stuff, but I kind of wanted to show you 
what my stash looks like, the things that I use the most, um, you know, some give you some good ideas of where to maybe start and things that you should get maybe. And everybody has their own you know, personal preference of what you're looking for. Again, I like fantasy base. I love fairies and trees and colors and, you know, um, butterflies and things like that. And I do a lot of watercolor painting and a lot of things like that. But depending on what you like, you know, you're just kind of grow and, and move that way. So if you have any questions or if there's anything that you would like me to do a video on, if anything that you saw, or if you'd like to see some of the work, you know, some of the things that I do with mine, or if you'd like me to, to do a tutorial on using any of these products, just let me know. I'll be happy to throw a quick video on. Um, I'm by far not a professional in any way, shape or form, but I do love sharing what I have learned from other people um some wonderful bloggers on youtube that i've learned from and i'd love to to help somebody else the way they help me so i hope you all have a wonderful day and thanks for spending some time with me today take care bye bye